To know how to record the moves of chess is not part of the rules. You can play chess for a whole lifetime without knowing chess notation. However, it is impossible to record games and positions without knowing chess notation. In fact, it is impossible to study chess books and improve your play without knowing chess notation. Therefore, this seems a good time to learn chess notation. Hi, this is Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis speaking. We're about to start episode number 10 of our ongoing podcast mini series, Reading E.S. Lowe's Chess in 30 Minutes, page 47, Chess Notation. Now this is about to get really complicated and intricate, even for me, so get out your pens and notepads. We're going to dig into some heavy theory. Chess Notation in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. This is a podcast mini-series, E.S. Lowe's Chess in 30 Minutes, Study and Practical Application, read by Jeremy Morrow, yours truly, and this is episode number 10, reading from chapter 3, Other Important Rules, the subheading, Chess Notation, on page 47. Chess in 30 Minutes, paperback by E.S. Lowe, published in January 1st. 1955, five out of five stars. Barb 1992 said, five stars, good handy book. Reviewed in the United States on May 14th, 2014. Verified purchase. Book is in really good condition. Arrived before scheduled time. Member of my family has had it for years. Now I can learn playing chess from my own copy clear and simple guide for a beginners. Buy this book on Amazon, link in the description. Page 47, next subheading, chess notation. To know how to record the moves of chess is not part of the rules. You can play chess for a whole lifetime without knowing chess notation. However, it is impossible to record games and positions without knowing chess notation. In fact, it is impossible to study chess books and improve your play without knowing chess notation. Therefore, this seems a good time to learn chess notation. Next paragraph, the principle of chess notation is quite simple. Every square on the chessboard has a name. Indeed, every square on the board has two names, depending on whether you are looking at it from the white side or the black side. These names are derived from the opening position. Diagram one. Maybe we have, we have the original diagram of all the chess pieces on the board originally. Next paragraph. Note the situation of White's forces in the opening position. His pieces are all on the first rank. His pawns are all on the second rank. Page 47, moving on to page 48. Page 48. The name of the king's square is K1. The bishop next to the king is known as the king bishop. Brackets KB. The king bishop square is KB1. The, the knight next to the king bishop is the king knight. Brackets KN. The king knight square is KN1. Brackets thus, you see that the abbreviation for knight is quote unquote n next paragraph the rook next to the king knight is the king rook brackets k r and it stands for k r one the queen brackets q stands for q one the bishop next to the queen is the queen bishop brackets q b it stands for q b one the knight next to the queen bishop is the queen. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a, I don't know if that is actually a typo. It says Q U E E um, apostrophe brackets. I can't read that properly. Or it says queen. Oh, maybe the, the, the letter N was uh, prop was damaged. The knight next to the queen bishop is the queen knight. 
brackets QN. It stands for QN1. Next paragraph, the rook next to the queen knight is the queen rook, brackets QR. It stands for QR1. Remember that the squares always have the same names, regardless of whether the original pieces are on them or not. The pawn in front of the king is called the king pawn. It stands on K2. Here is a table of the names of the pawns and the names of the squares they occupy at the beginning of the game. We have pawn and square. So pawn, we have queen, rook, pawn, brackets, QRP, square, QR2. Queen, knight, pawn, QNP, and this on the square is QN2. We have next we have queen bishop pawn brackets q b p and the square is q b2 next we have pawn q pardon me pawn fourth we have queen pawn brackets q p and the square is q2 next we have king pawn brackets k p and that's square k2 then we have king bishop pawn brackets k b p uh, square is K B two. Second last on the list we have King Knight Pawn brackets K N P, and that's square K N two. And finally on the list we have King Rook Pawn, K R P, square K N. No, pardon me, K R two. Some of the the uh, the print on the uh, the book page is uh, damaged, so it's hard to read it. K R P, uh, P, pardon me, K R two. That's the last one on page 48. Moving on to page 49, next paragraph. By now you can probably guess at the system used for naming all the squares. The vertical rows on the board are named for the pieces standing on them at the beginning of the game. Thus the file in which the king stands is the king file. The squares in this file are K one, K2, K3, K4, K5, K6, K7, and K8. The squares on the queen rook file are QR1, QR2, QR3, etc. up to QR8. If the king pawn advances two squares, we record the move as quote unquote P dash Q four. We don't have to specify which pawn because the king pawn is the only one that can go to K four. Next paragraph. The ranks or horizontal rows are named for numbers. Thus all the squares on the first rank end in one. All the squares in the second rank end in two. The squares in the third rank end in three. The squares in the fourth rank end in four etc. Now, how about black? He follows the same system. Note, however, that when he moves, he numbers the squares from his side of the board. Next paragraph. The square that is K4 from white side of the board is K5 from black side of the board. The square that is K5 from the white side of the board is K4 from the black side of the board. If black moves his king, pawn two squares we write that move quote unquote dot 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 p dash k4 end quote the three dots in front of the move show that it is a black move final paragraph on the page on page 49 you will always have the moves clear if you remember that each player counts off his moves from his side of the board page 50 Next, we have the next paragraph. You have already seen that each piece and pawn has its special abbreviations. There are a number of other abbreviations. X, brackets, captures. Minus, brackets, move to. Exclamation point, brackets, a good move. Question mark, 
brackets a bad move. CH brackets check. Dis CH or DIS space CH brackets discovered check. DBL space CH means in brackets double check. E dot P dot means brackets captures in passing. Just to get the feel of chess notation, let's play over a very short game. In capitals, we have white and black. First, let's look at number one, white. P-K4. And in black, we have P-K4. Two, we have B-B4. And in black, we have B-B4. Three, we have Q dash R5, and in black, N dash Q, B3. Finally, we have four, Q, X, BP, mate. And there is no, there's no black move there. Diagram 37 shows the final position. We have diagram 37, final position. And here we have the diagram of all those positions based on the chest notation and the symbols that are used. Diagram 37, brackets final position. Next paragraph, check this final position very carefully to make sure that you thoroughly understand how each move was made. Brackets in the final position, black cannot capture the white queen because it is guarded by white's bishop on Q, B, 4. And now for a brief review using our 3D chess game that's available on the Microsoft website for free. For chess notation, remember this. The principle of chess notation is quite simple. Every square on the chessboard has a name. Indeed, every square on the board has two names, depending on whether you are looking at it from the white side or the black side. These names are derived from the opening position of diagram one. So here we have a 3D representation of the opening position of diagram one. Note the situation of White's forces in the opening position. His pieces are all on the first rank. His pawns are all on the second rank. And here we have it all drawn out for you on the board. One and two. The name of the king's square is K1. The bishop next to the king is known as the king bishop, KB. The king bishop square is KB1. The knight next to the king's bishop is the king knight, KN. The king knight square is KN1. Thus you see that the abbreviation for knight is quote unquote N. The rook next to the king knight is the king rook kr and it stands on kr1 the queen stands on q1 the bishop next to the queen is the queen bishop qb it stands on qb1 the knight next to the queen bishop is the queen knight or qn it stands on Q, N, 1. The rook next to the queen knight is the queen rook, or Q, R. It stands on Q, R, 1. Remember that the squares always have the same names, regardless of whether the original pieces are on them or not. The pawn in front of the king is called the king pawn. It stands on K, Two. Here is a table of the names of the pawns and the names of the squares they occupy at the beginning of the game. So we have the first pawn, the queen rook pawn, brackets Q R P on square Q R two. Queen knight pawn, brackets Q N P 
on square Q N2. Then we have queen bishop pawn, brackets Q B P, on Q B2. Next we have queen pawn, brackets Q P, on square Q2. Then we have the king pawn, brackets K P, on square K2. Next, we have the king bishop pawn, K B P, on square K B2. Then we have the king knight pawn, brackets Q K N P, on square K N2. And finally, we have the king rook pawn, brackets K R P, on square K R2. By now, you can probably guess at the system used for naming all the squares. The vertical rows on the board are named for the pieces standing on them at the beginning of the game. Thus, the file in which the king stands is the king file. The squares in this file are K1, K2, K3, K4, K5, K6, K7, and K8. The squares on the queen rook file are QR1, QR2, QR3, QR4, QR5, QR6, QR7, and QR8. If the king pawn advances two squares, we record the move as P-K4. We don't have to specify which pawn because the king pawn is the only one that can go to K4. The ranks or horizontal rows are named for numbers. Thus, all the squares in the first rank end in 1. All the squares in the second rank end in 2. The squares in the third rank end in 3. The squares in the fourth rank end in 4, etc. Now, how about black? He follows the same system. Note, however, that when he moves, he numbers the squares from his side of the board. The square that is K4 from the white side of the board is K5 from the black side of the board. The square that is K5 from the white side of the board is K4 from the black side of the board. If black moves his king pawn two squares, we write that move, quote unquote, dot, 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 P dash K4, end quote. Uh, brackets, the three dots in the front of the move show that it is a black move. You will always have the moves clear if you Remember that each player counts off his moves from his side of the board. You have already seen that each piece and pawn has its special abbreviation. There are a number of other abbreviations. X means captures. Minus means moves to. Exclamation point means a good move. Question mark means a bad move. CH means check, DIS space CH means discovered check, DBL space CH means double check, and E dot P dot means captures in passing. Diagram 37 shows the final position. We have white 1 P dash K4, black P dash K4, 2, B dash B4, black B dash B4, white 3, Q dash R5, black N dash Q B3, and finally white, we have 4, fourth move is Q, X, BP, mate, and of course X means captures, and X captures the bishop pawn mate. Check this final position very carefully 
to make sure that you thoroughly understand how each move was made. Brackets in the final position, black cannot capture the white queen because it is guarded by white's bishop on q b4. This is on page 50 from the book. Next page, page 51, and a new subheading, Drawn Games. Okay, so we'll cut the reading short. Um, we are going to continue on another episode. This has been episode number 10. We've been learning uh, chapter 3, Other Important Rules, subheading Chess Notation on page 47. Thanks so much for tuning in. Say subscribe to Video Gamers Oasis on my YouTube channel. We're going to continue this reading on episode number 11 from uh, chapter 3, Other Important Rules, subheading Drawn Games on page 51.